top 10 most terrifying and incredibly powerful Venom villains. Venom, Marvel's most enigmatic complex and badass character, is the ultimate lethal protector against evil forces. Originally appearing as Spider-Man's famous black suit, the Venom symbiote gathered much attention and established his fan base, which has been quite stirred since the famous uncredited post-credit appearance in the MCU film Spider-Man No Way Home. According to comic journalist and historian Mike Conroy, what started as a replacement costume for Spider-Man turned into one of the Marvel web slingers greatest nightmares. Spider-Man's greatest arch nemesis is known for his moral ambiguity, which is quite brilliantly expressed in the duality of a villain and an anti-hero shown by the duo collectively known as the Venom. Unlike Spider-Man's other villains, the unique chemistry between the two halves, Eddie Brock and the Venom symbiote, creates a morally gray character and engages the audience into rooting for both. Marvel's new Venom is undoubtedly the strongest symbiote and has faced several villains who are not only of his kind, but often belong to his bloodline. Here are the 10 most terrifying and incredibly powerful villains faced by Venom. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. Number 1. Null The first something in the universe was none other than the Null. Null was the ruler of the Abyss, the existential chasm that existed between the destruction of the sixth cosmos and the creation of the seventh cosmos. He was originally awakened by the light of the creation when the Celestials started building the universe which caused the self-proclaimed primordial god of darkness to be outraged. The vindictive deity attempted to counterattack the Celestials by creating a sword of living darkness. Known as the All Black, the blade was forged from his newly cast shadow, which soon beheaded one of the Celestials. In return, the rest of the Celestials cast him back to the Void. However, Null found a way to fortify his sword's cosmic energy by using the cleaved head of the Celestial that he had decapitated. Enraged by the light that had taken over his Kingdom of Darkness, Null resolved to consume the light and wage a decimating war against the other deities and the entirety of life. Null, clad in symbiote armor, became known for his reign of terror among the divine species. His divine physiology is challenged by his vanity, which is ultimate weakness. The God of Darkness possesses powers unlike most deities, which are unimaginable to humans. A fair share of his power comes from the unusual link between all black and the undead corpse of the celestial that he had paired the sword with to channel its cosmic energy. As you would expect from the ruler of the living abyss, Null carries the ability to create life from the darkness, and along with it, he can infect mortal creatures with the same matter, giving rise to the infantry of parasites such as the symbiote armor. Inherently, Null, the ultimate creator junction of the army's hive mind, has the power to not only mentally influence and control them, but also steer their biomass. With his manifestation powers, he can conjure up a pair of dragon-like wings which grant him the ability to fly. With powers like superhuman strength, durability, dark energy manipulation, self-sustenance, shape-shifting, regenerative healing factor, and temporal manipulation, Null cannot be truly killed and has existed since immemorial. However, he can be defeated by being injured to the point of disintegration. In a fight with Eddie Brock, Null was brutally maimed by the God of Light's power, but he remained resilient and attempted to transfer his consciousness to the symbiote hive mind. Luckily, his physical form was destroyed by Eddie, but Null isn't truly dead and has lived up to the reputation of nothing can kill Null. Number 2. Carnage this temperamental Venom spawn has earned a notorious reputation thanks to its clinically unhinged host, Cletus Cassidy. Cletus experienced an unsettling childhood which resulted in him burning down an orphanage and marking the origin of Carnage, much before his bonding with Venom's asexually produced progeny. Cletus was originally a serial killer convicted of 11 life sentences, which led to him bunking with Eddie Brock. While Eddie was being rescued by the Venom symbiote, it gave birth to a symbiote that fused with Cletus to form Carnage. Carnage has notoriously appeared as an enemy not only to Venom, but to Spider-Man, Deadpool, and even the Avengers. Due to his egomaniacal conquests and grandiose sense of self, Carnage and Cletus eventually had a fallout after the destruction of Null. Cletus was destined to be Carnage, deriving from a vision of the primordial god of darkness Null during infancy. His antisocial nature was evident from an early age from acts such as mutilating his mother's dog. This was a product of the psychological and physical abuse he had endured as a kid. As an adult, he found pleasure in gore and carnage and derived joy from the chaos which stemmed from violence. His insatiable lust for blood and unpredictable nature resulted in short-lived alliances as he turned on his allies as soon as he got bored of them. The Carnage symbiote had a wide range of powers 
powers, which helped him stand a chance against Spider-Man and Deadpool. Particularly, a host with antisocial personality disorder gave Carnage the upper hand in harnessing his powers, and together they formed a ruthless monstrosity capable of destruction. Cletus Cassidy of Earth-616 has surpassed Eddie Brock in bonding with the most number of symbiotes. It's safe to say that Cletus and Carnage form a balanced duo as agents of destruction. Number 3. Toxin Despite being the lesser known member of the symbiote clan, Toxin is one of the strongest members of Venom's lineage. Being a Carnage spawn, Toxin has moved through various hosts to find the right fit. It started when Carnage used Patrick Mulligan's body to spawn his unwanted offspring. Carnage originally planned on killing his newborn, but could not complete the job as he was too weak after giving birth. He planted Toxin on Mulligan, which resulted in them bonding to form a crime-fighting duel in the future. Venom named his grandkid Toxin after him and fought Carnage. The 1,000th spawn of Venom's symbiote lineage had the potential of being stronger than both Venom and Carnage, which scared both of them, along with the fact that Toxin host was an NYPD cop led to Venom teaming up with Carnage for the very first time to kill Toxin. Spider-Man found himself in the Battle of the Symbiote Trinity and sided with Toxin. This was the start of Toxin's superhero arc. Patrick Mulligan had to fight the powerful symbiote's heightened bloodlust and hunger for violence on his conquest to train him as a hero. Toxin inherited an array of powers from his grand lineage such as superhuman strength, speed, stamina, agility, reflexes, and durability. He also possesses unique senses such as limited psychic ability and offspring detection. Toxin's spider sense is known to be more efficient than Spider-Man's spider sense, which also makes him immune to it. The Carnage spawn can manipulate matter in several ways and alter its shape. With regeneration powers and incredible camouflaging techniques, Toxin has inherited the best of his clan. Thanks to its predecessor, Toxin can cling to any surface and project unlimited web-like substance, just like Spider-Man. Derived from Brock, Toxin can produce toxic bites to live up to the name given to him by his grandfather. With an amazing sense of smell, Toxin can track anyone. However, he is weakened by fire and high-pitched sounds along with the obvious symbiote inhibitor drugs. Toxin has so far exhibited a high regard for Mulligan and maintained a healthy relationship between the two until the untimely death of Mulligan. In the future, Toxin bonds with a teenager named Bren Waters and despite constant bickering, the duo form a friendship and start to genuinely care about each other. Number 4. The poisons The Poisons belong to an alien race of the hive mind from Earth-17952, contriving against symbiotes to assimilate the symbiotes and their hosts, strengthen them, and turn them into soldiers of their kind. Originally, the Poisons came into light during their hunt for the Venom symbiote and were found by the Venomized incarnation of Doctor Strange, who began a quest to Venomize other multiverse heroes to revolt against the Poisons. Soon, the Poisons stole Doctor Strange's idea and planned on assimilating the Venomized heroes to create a super army of poisoned heroes. A Poison Battalion was formed by Poison Doctor Doom and Poison Thanos to capture Venomized Doctor Strange to use his powers in luring in the heroes all across the multiverse to assimilate them into the Poison Army. Despite being successful in their attempts, Poison Deadpool and members of the Resistance save the day by freeing Doctor Strange. The Poisons usually take the form of their target's loved ones or innocent bystanders to forge a permanent bond with them and further consume the symbiote's original host in an attempt to assimilate the symbiote's mind, taking full control over the symbiote. However, this can be a long process, and the poisons might experience some resistance from the hosts as well. After taking over a symbiote's biomass, the poisons can manipulate its biomass to create weapons and tentacles. Without a host, the poisons have very limited abilities and mostly use them to obtain a host. However, after assimilation, they become comparatively stronger and are capable of strengthening the original host by forsaking any weaknesses in them. A major shortcoming is that the poisons can neither consume a human without bonding with them, nor consume a symbiote that is bonded to a human. Number 5. Riot one of the five symbiotes spawned by Venom under the influence of the Life Foundation was Riot. The Life Foundation was an organization funded by wealthy clients, and in return, the Foundation offered protection from mutually assured destruction by forming a troop of superhuman police. To create this troop, the Foundation's leader, Carlton Drake, found a way to extract five symbiote seeds out of Venom by the use of sheer force, and later hatched them in the lab. The offsprings were too young to control hosts, and therefore, one of them was merged with Trevor Cole, a security officer of the Foundation. Together, they were named Riot. Trevor's aggressive mentality played a role in the manifestation of Riot's powers. Being a Venom spawn, Riot inherited similar powers such as immunity to Spider-Man's spider sense, the ability to create organic webs, wall crawling, camouflage, and regeneration. With powers of matter generation and manipulation, Riot can manifest large bludgeoning weapons like hammers and maces, unlike his symbiote siblings. Riot differs in color but resembles its parent Venom and can fuse with hybrid siblings to form a stronger entity. 
Number 6. Scream The Scream symbiote belongs to one of the five venom spawns hatched in a lab in the Mojave Desert by the Life Foundation. Scream was soon bonded to Donna Diego, a volunteer of the Life Foundation, an organization funded by the American government providing protection to wealthy clients from impending doom. While the leader of the Foundation, Carlton Drake, schemed to form an army of super policemen, Donna Diego was chosen from the original security force of mercenaries, policemen, and soldiers. Donna is known for killing her symbiote siblings after experiencing a psychotic breakdown. It was later revealed that Prior to being bonded to Scream, Donna had a record of hearing voices and was mentally ill. She was convinced that anyone bonded to a symbiote is evil and went on a murder spree when she was ultimately stopped by Venom. In the future, after she is shown as a member of the Sinister Syndicate, Brock traps her using a sonic device and kills her with a heated knife, taking advantage of both of her weaknesses. As a super villainess, Scream uses her hair as a weapon and has camouflaging abilities. She shares the same powers as her parents' symbiote Venom and her siblings, such as wall crawling, web slinging, and a super spidey sense, although the exact limits of her superhuman strength are unknown. Her hair manipulation abilities and wing flight set her apart from her symbiote siblings. Number 7. The Jury A group of vigilantes financed by General Orwell Taylor, consisting of Sentry, Ramshot, Screech, Firearm, and Bomb Blast were united in seeking revenge from Venom, who had killed Taylor's son's Hugh while breaking out from a prison known as the Vault. The team members are outfitted with the Guardsmen armor based on Tony Stark's blueprints, but paired with Sonics and Fire to stand a chance against the symbiotes. The armors are accessorized with each member having a special weapon. In their first attempt, the team fails to destroy Venom, but successfully kidnaps Spider-Man. As the name suggests, the group of vigilantes try Spider-Man for his original crime, which was bringing the Venom symbiote to Earth. The trial includes several witnesses testifying against Venom's crimes as well. The plan was to guilt Spider-Man and convince him into helping the jury steal a weapon specially designed by the government with the potential to kill Venom. However, the jury was defeated. After numerous defeats, the jury shifts gears as Orwell finds himself paranoid about his team members' intentions. He is convinced that his teammates are conspiring against him, and in revolt, he leaves them to die at the hands of Life Foundation's leader, Carlton Drake. The jury survives and eventually Orwell is replaced by his son, Max, aka Screech, who gives up his identity to take the role of a defense attorney and reinvent the jury as a representative of the legal system. Screech's identity is replaced by Jennifer Stewart, a former guardsman whose husband was a victim of a riot at the vault. Jennifer acquires the identity of Whisper and kills Tarantula in a death match. Soon the team loses its funding and support. Eventually they are defeated by Songbird in a fight against the new Thunderbolts. Number 8. Lee Price Lee Price was dealt a bad hand in life. Starting from an abusive childhood in Queens, New York, Lee Price escaped his suffering by committing arson and killing his parents. He quite carefully framed a mutant boy with pyrokinesis and convinced himself that his father had abandoned him to cope with a traumatic memory. After joining the Army Rangers, Lee was discharged due to an injury from a mine explosion resulting in him losing two fingers on his left hand. Facing eviction from his apartment and unemployment, Lee had to join the Black Cats gang as a muscle in an arms deal between the Black Cats and the Tombstone's crew. In a confrontation that went wrong, Lee was saved from being shot by the Venom symbiote looking for a host. Lee Price uses cold and callous measures to hide his true fears and is shown to be a vengeful, cynical loner who later on grows a hunger for power, which led to him creating his own criminal organization. After bonding with a maniac symbiote, Price was granted an array of incredible powers such as invisibility, night vision, poisonous fangs, and most importantly, thanks to his immense willpower to remain bonded, Price cannot be separated from a symbiote. Price also also shares the same powers as the Venom symbiote, including regenerative healing factor, wall crawling abilities, spider sense, and immunity to Spider Man's spider sense. Lee's military training gives him an upper hand, helps him repel psychic incursions, and gains control of Venom easily. Number 9. Lasher Sharing the same origin as the other four Venom spawns created by the Life Foundation, Lasher was bonded to a mercenary known as Ramon Hernandez. During Scream's schizophrenic breakdown, Ramon tried to reason with Scream, but was met with the same fate as the other siblings, as Scream killed all of her symbiote siblings. However, Lasher survived and was sent to the vault, where it was experimented upon. Lasher's weakened state and fear of being alone subdued its violent nature. Soon, it merged together with its symbiote siblings and bonded with Scott Washington to form a hybrid. Lasher enhances its host's natural abilities to superhuman levels such as strength, durability, stamina, and even smelling senses. It even can manipulate its biomass in different ways. Stemming from its parent symbiote, Venom's powers, Lasher has the ability to regenerate, crawl walls or any other surface, and the immunity to Spider-Man's spider sense as well as organic web generation. The Lasher's signature move involves manipulating matter to create six tentacles on its upper back and three on each side to lash at his opponents. Due to the brutal experiments in the Lasher, it gains the ability to physiologically bond and extend itself between a pilot user and the corpse of a non-sentient entity known as remote symbiosis, and thus direct a range of attacks through small bipedal animals. 
Number 10, Agony. Agony was bonded to Leslie Gesneria, a security force officer at the Life Foundation. After Leslie was killed by Scream, Agony was imprisoned and experimented on. Soon, the four symbiote siblings fused together to form Hybrid, a vigilante symbiote bonded to Scott Washington. However, that did not last long as Eddie Brock murdered Scott with an anti-symbiote weaponry, thus leading to the US Army recovering the Hybrid symbiote and defusing the four siblings, Agony, Riot, Phage, and Lasher. When Carnage started a murder spree, the four siblings chose not to amalgamate into one entity, but rather created a mosaic version of Hybrid and helped Deadpool locate Carnage. After Agony was experimented on, it developed the power of muscle mass enhancement, granting extra physical strength to its host. With an accelerated healing factor, Agony's acid generation and metabolic chemical absorption powers are unlike other Life Foundation symbiotes. The symbiote could use her metabolism to spit acid capable of burning through substances, however the exact limit and range of this power are not known. It could even absorb and redistribute chemicals such as Spider-Man's artificial webbing. With an immunity to the spidey sense and the ability to generate webs and sling them, Agony could put up a fight against the classic web slinger. Number 11, Phage. Appearing for the first time in Venom Lethal Protector Issue 4, Phage is one of the five Venom spawns hatched in a lab in the Mojave Desert by the Sinister Life Foundation. Phage was bonded to a mercenary known as Carl Mock. In the fourth issue, Phage is killed by Scream along with its symbiote siblings using a sonic knife. However, the Phage symbiote survives and forms the collective entity known as Hybrid. Eventually, Hybrid is disbanded and Phage is assigned to Lieutenant Rico Axelson to kill Carnage. In its symbiote form, Phage shares a strong resemblance to his brother Carnage and strengths and abilities as well. Phage's most recent appearance showcases its return where it is teaming with Carnage and hunting down Scream and Extreme Carnage, Phage Issue 1. Due to the experiments conducted on the symbiote in the vault, Phage has heightened sensory awareness with telescopic vision. Like the rest of the family, Phage has similar powers to Spider-Man, but most notably, both Carnage and Phage can manipulate matter to create bladed weapons and use it as their primary method of attack. Like father, like son, Phage is weakened by anti-venom. Marvelous Verdict With a lineage that is hard to keep track of, Venom surely has a clan of extremely powerful villains who not only stand a chance against him, but also occasionally join forces with him to battle against other symbiotes. Each has an exceptional storyline and unique powers. With Venom's official debut in the MCU, the fandom is looking forward to watching these villains make it to the big screen. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.